welcome to episode 508 of the Entertainment 2.0 podcast brought to you by the digitalmediazone.com. I'm Josh Polly. And I'm Richard Gunther, and this is the show that puts you in control of your favorite movies, music, shows, and games. And Josh, we're doing something different this time. We are. We're trying to do this in a way that we can post it straight to YouTube for people who want to see the video but can't exactly show up on Tuesday nights at 8.30 p.m. Eastern to watch us do it live. And we don't really have any good explanation for why anyone would want to see the video, but whatever, <laughs> you know, maybe. Faces for podcasting. Yeah. <laughs> well, well anyway. um, yeah. So, hey, we have uh, no direct email to our email inbox this week. And, you know, we look there every week at entertainment20 at the digital media zone dot com. But nothing there. Nothing there. Fortunately, in that inbox, we also get notified of comments on the website. And we did get one of those today, actually, on uh, a post that we've talked a lot about on the last few episodes, and that is Microsoft killing off Windows Media Center guide data. Sean commented and said, honestly, until HD Home Run allows the Prime to record DRM channels, Windows Media Center is the only solution for cable subscribers. And Sean, I appreciate your, your love for the HD Home Run and for Windows Media Center, but there actually are some other options, in, including using that, that HD Home Run Prime. You can use it on other devices, not just Windows Media Center. So we actually wrote a post on this. Boy, I didn't look at the date. It was a while ago. Uh, it, it's called HD Home Run now supports DRM on Android. And yeah, this was actually July 30th, 2018. And that isn't even when, when all of the news hit because while yes, it's true, you can use your HD Home Run Prime app with Android, Prior to that, they released support for the DRM recordings in Windows 10 on, on that app and on the Xbox One, because the Xbox One app is basically the same thing as the Windows 10 app. Yeah, and, and I think that's the big deal, right? Is that if you're in that kind of home theater PC mentality, then that's your option, either Windows 10 or Xbox One. Now, what's missing here? Very obviously, anything with an Apple logo on it <laughs> anywhere. Right. But it's worth pointing out that when we say Android, that doesn't just mean your phone. It also includes Android TV. So one of our favorite devices that we talk about a lot, the NVIDIA Shield TV, can be used with HD Home Run and the HD Home Run DVR, and can even act as the HD Home Run DVR server if you plug a hard drive into the thing. So you can do all of your copy protected content recording and watching on an NVIDIA Shield. So you do have other options now. And that's nowhere near an expensive uh, proposition as it was when it first came out. Right, right. The, the brand new NVIDIA Shield TVs are 150 bucks. So you got a lot of options there uh, if, if you want to stick with the HD Home Run. Now, are any of them better than Windows Media Center? Probably not, but, yeah, no. yeah, but, but they are other options. And there's another option if you want your own DVR, but you don't want to maintain a PC anymore, TiVo. TiVo still has a cable card offering. Yeah, I don't think that's what he's getting at, though. I, I suspect that Sean's point is, you know, as a an HD Home Run Prime owner that used to get my content over Media Center and had total control over the recordings and everything, I suspect that he's looking for that same sort of experience. And I don't know that you're going to get that same experience, but I do believe that HD Home Run's app. Now, maybe that's what his problem is. Maybe he doesn't want to use the HD Home Run app. I don't know. But 
you you do have that ability on Windows 10. Now, he was talking about recording DRM channels, not just watching them. Do these devices that we talked about enable you to, so for example, on an NVIDIA Shield, record DRM'd programs and then watch them back on Windows 10 or Android TV or whatever? Yeah, yep, totally. Okay. Cool. Yeah, not something I've done in years since I cut the cable a long time ago. But yeah, it does work. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm I still have the cable, but I have my TiVo. <laughs> and you don't have an HD Home Run Prime. What are you talking about? Oh yeah, you do. I was thinking you didn't. What are you talking about? That that's what I record through when I record stuff on Plex. Yeah, I totally forgot that you did. Because when I told you that I still have one, you were wanting to steal mine from me so that you could have a backup. <laughs> right. I, I might need that backup someday. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Well, why don't we get on with the news? And it's actually going to stick with NVIDIA Shield TV things for the first couple of stories here. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting too, right? So you have the original NVIDIA Shield TV, right? Yes, from 2015. Do you like your remote? It's fine. Well, you know, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's fine because it it does the, the normal stuff, but it's not so great that I actually use it. I use my Harmony remote because it has mm. a lot more buttons on it. Right. Okay. All right. Well, I, I understand that the new NVIDIA Shield has, well, a somewhat weird remote, a much better remote than the original. Yeah, yeah. It's it's better in pretty much every way imaginable. Um, <laughs> it uses AAA batteries. That's kind of a big deal. Like, I don't like these remote controls that have to be recharged. Like, that's just kind of annoying to me. Uh, so yeah. it's got AAA batteries, and it's got a whole lot more buttons. It's got volume buttons instead of the weird volume slider uh that, that tony's talking about on the original remote that that part was super dumb i hated that it's got a play and pause button fast forward rewind a google assistant button which is nice and a dedicated netflix button because it seems like everything has to have a dedicated netflix button because they paid the money to have one <laughs> right that's the actual reason why uh, and the really cool thing is that, you know, you know why, why are we talking, Richard, about a remote for a device that came out months ago? The reason we're talking about it is because this week, NVIDIA announced uh, updates, software updates to the previous two versions of the NVIDIA Shield, the, the one that came out in 2015 and the one that came out in 2017. And it, amongst other things, allows you to use the new remote on the older boxes. So if you've got one of the older ones and you hate the remote and you'd like to get a new one, you can, and it won't set you back too much money either. It's only 29 bucks. This is so, so smart. I, I, I wish, well, I was gonna say, I wish Apple would do this, but that would mean that they would come out with a new better remote. <laughs> yeah, that would be really beneficial to them. Right. <laughs> yes, it would be. It would be. You know, it's funny. We passed up a story, I think, months ago now about a company in Europe that was releasing a remote to control your Apple TV just because of the fact that the Apple TV remote was so bad. So anyway, I'm glad to see this. I think people underestimate the importance of having a good remote, one that's logical and one that works the way people expect their remote to work. Yeah. Now, that that story was on 9to5Google, which is a site that I've not really frequented much. You're the one who actually put that in there, which it still freaks me out that you look at Android sites. But <laughs> <laughs> while I was there, I was like, I, I should give this site a, a look and see what other things they've got. And they actually had another post about, like specifically about 
this NVIDIA Shield TV software update. And there's a couple of other features that uh, it brings along. It's not just support for this new remote. It also adds support for the Xbox Elite 2 controller, that $190 Xbox controller. So if you're a huge gamer and doing lots of gaming on your NVIDIA Shield, then you can buy pretty much the best controller available and use it with your NVIDIA Shield. That's cool. Here's the kind of sleeper hit though. We don't talk a ton about channels DVR. I'm not really sure why, uh, because it is like universally loved, especially by you Apple people. Mm -hmm. the, the channels DVR app, like there's, there's a channels app for NVIDIA Shield. There's also a channels DVR app for the NVIDIA Shield. So you can use the Shield as a channels DVR, which I didn't even know that existed. You know, we've talked a lot. We just earlier talked about using an NVIDIA Shield as an HD home run DVR. We've talked in the past about it being a Plex DVR, but you can also set it up to be a channels DVR. Right and now, doesn't channels depend upon the HD home run to actually, you know, get content? Yes. Yeah, you do have to have an HD home run tuner, just like Plex and, and the HD home run DVR app, obviously. But yeah, you you grab your HD home run, stick it on the same network, grab a big USB hard drive typically, and plug that in, and you've got a channels DVR on your NVIDIA Shield. Well, they've updated the channels DVR app. Now you don't have to do the, the USB hard drive. You can set the channels DVR app up to store its recorded content on a NAS. And that could be pretty beneficial for some users, especially if you just don't want a big honk and a hard drive hanging off the side of your NVIDIA Shield, or if you need more storage than a single USB hard drive would give you. Yeah, that's slick. That's really cool. I don't think I even, well, not that I don't think, I didn't <laughs> know that channels existed on the Android platform. So that's cool. At least as a DVR. Yeah. Now, one thing worth pointing out, if, if you're interested in channels DVR, especially like channels is huge amongst the Apple TV people. And uh, to do the DVR stuff, you will need to subscribe to their channels plus package. And that does cost money. It's either $8 a month or $80 a year, which is not cheap. No, it's not cheap. It is cheaper than TiVo. <laughs> That's about the only thing I can think of that it's cheaper than. Right? But it is less, it is more expensive than Plex. It is more expensive than Tableau. It is more expensive than anything I can think of that lets you get your TV content. Right, more expensive than HD Home Run DVR also. Well, yeah, but that's $35 a year. I mean, that's <laughs> <Right>. crazy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay, last story in the video section. This one, my family is really, really, really excited about. I, I, yep. Yeah. <laughs> and not just me, the whole family. Maybe not Gia. But I saw as I was getting, uh, just getting home from work, grabbed my phone, looked at my Reddit notifications. Reddit knows me. My phone and Reddit know me. And there was a link to the hockey subreddit uh, that was actually a link to a Twitter feed that covers Disney Plus stuff and the announcement that there is a Mighty Ducks TV series coming to Disney Plus. And it's not just some crappy knockoff with brand new actors that no one likes. Yeah, apparently that's not the news. <laughs> no, I mean, that's pretty big news. I didn't know that part was happening either. But the the big news today is that Emilio Estevez is coming back to play Coach Gordon Bombay in the series. So, I mean, this is I think this is the only casting announcement so far. But that's the one you want, right? I am like such a crazy Disney fan. I don't even know who Coach Bombay is. You've never, have you seen the Mighty Ducks? I have not seen the Mighty oh, Ducks. Oh, Richard. Come on. You're, you're killing me here. 
Like you I give guess. me so much crap for not seeing a lot of movies. You watch everything and you've never seen the Mighty Ducks. Yeah, I'm going to have to watch this. You are. It's probably in a list somewhere. There were three of them. You should at least watch the first two. Are they all worth watching? Uh, at least the first two. Mm-hmm. I, I don't... Three... Uh, Estevez only had like a small cameo appearance in. But the first two, definitely worth watching. Hmm. <laughs> and it was Amelia Estevez, so I'm assuming these are like 80s, 90s movies? Um, Like earlier, mid-90s. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It, it's a weird plot when you when you think when you sit back and think about it. It's basically, you know, thirteen year old boy gets kicked off of his hockey team. His mom wants to start a new hockey team. They need a coach, and Emilio Estevez gets arrested for drunk driving. That yes, drunk driving in a Disney movie, and for his community service, he has to be their team's coach. <laughs> it's weird, but that's the plot. And isn't there actually a Mighty Ducks team? Uh, there was, yes. Okay. Disney did own the naming rights to the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim, uh, a team in the NHL. They're no longer the Mighty Ducks. They're just the Anaheim Ducks. Oh, that's sad. Yeah. I imagine Disney wanted to stop paying them. A- again, there we go. There's yet another problem with the whole branded naming rights thing (laughs) yeah all right all right let's move on to some audio news yep and we just have one story here we're going to talk a little bit about the recent sonos news so man sonos has just made one communications fell up after another over the past couple of months you may remember that a couple months ago they announced, I think it was probably only two months ago, around the end of November, they announced the Sonos Trade Up program where you had the ability to trade up to a newer version of your Sonos devices. That deal is that you get 30% off of a Sonos device if you agree to recycle your existing older Sonos device. And pretty much most of the old Sonos devices were there. It was a pretty good deal. And you could take advantage of this on any new Sonos device or Sonos package. Well, they got a lot of bad press about this because the way that they recycle, and again, air quotes, is that they brick your traded up device and you are responsible for taking it to a recycling center you're not allowed to well you could resell it but that would be really dishonest because it doesn't work anymore and so a lot of people got pretty upset about that so they spent some time time trying to clean up from that a little bit and help people understand look you don't have to do this it's just an option you could resell it if that's a better option for you Then, just two weeks ago, Sonos announces, and if you didn't see the writing on the wall for this, you haven't been paying attention, that older devices were no longer going to get updates. That as of, I think they said May of this year, the older devices, and this included things specifically like the old Connect and Connect Amp and the old Play 5, we're no longer going to receive updates whenever they rolled out updates to the other devices. And the, the reasoning is that they're not powerful enough to support the types of features that they're rolling out on their new devices. Well, they also reminded people when they sent this announcement out that you could participate in their trade-up program. Remember, people thought that meant that they were getting all of their devices bricked. So people freaked out. Again, this one, clearly Sonos's fault. Sonos did not do a good job of communicating this to people. So again, Sonos makes a statement just a couple days ago 
and the CEO posted a message to the blog, pretty much restating everything that they said before, but trying to be a little bit more clear about what it meant. Because what you were reading in the tech press was Sonos is bricking your old devices. And I know this is a politically charged statement, but that's fake news. That is not what was really happening. They were offering you the ability to participate in a trade-up program if you wanted to. And if they, if you did, then they would brick your device. But your old devices are going to continue to work as long as Sonos can possibly keep them functioning. And let me just be really clear here. Sonos has a very good history of keeping old devices working. I think I've mentioned on this show and on Home On in the past that our friend Chris Milligan has some of the original controllers, like the handhold controllers that look like big fat iPhones or, or <laughs> iPods that don't, that they still work. Like Sonos has still kept them alive even though some of the features can't be supported anymore, they still support those devices. They, they, they don't support them, but they've kept them alive. Mm -hmm. So everybody needs to calm down because this, this is not as bad as everybody thinks. I truly believe, and their CEO attempts to appease people to understand that they're going to do what they can to keep the devices alive, including, and this was a bit of a backtrack, including releasing security patches and stuff like that when necessary to the older devices. Now, the thing that has people a little bit up in arms is that they've suggested that once that happens, once these devices no longer get the same updates that the other devices get, that they can't all work on the same network together. And they're trying to figure out how to make that work. What? 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 Yeah, that they might potentially have to be two different Sonos networks in your home. That's crazy. It is kind of crazy. And, and that is something to be concerned about. Yeah, yeah. Because right? part of the reason you get Sonos is to have whole home audio right but they're trying to come up with a way to make that a little bit less troublesome for consumers and my i mean my question to them which i hope i get the opportunity to ask is why not just let them work side by side except the some devices won't have all the same features, kind of the same way that I can AirPlay 2 to some of my devices, but not to others. So we'll see what happens there, but really everybody just needs to kind of calm down a little bit, not stress about this. It's not as bad as the press has reported. I truly believe that Sonos is not trying to, uh, what, what what's the force obsolescence of their devices. That's not the way this company has operated. No, these these are old devices, really old for technology devices. Yeah. Now, you know, one could argue, yeah, but they're expensive. It's not like you're buying a $200 thermostat. You're buying a, in many cases, $500 piece of equipment or sometimes more. And so shouldn't that still work? Well, maybe Maybe not. That's a hard question. You know, I just listened to Stacey Higginbotham's most recent episode of the IoT podcast where they kind of, you know, struggled with this question because she's the first one to say that companies should kind of put an expiration date on their IoT devices. Yeah. So, yeah. We'll see how this fleshes out, but I, I would just advise that everybody just you know not worry as much i really do think they're going to try and do the right thing they have a history of doing the right thing by their customers and hopefully we'll find that you know, you know th this is all going to work out and seriously if you don't want to trade up meaning 
which does mean brick, your device, and don't sell it on eBay. Give it to your kids. Give it to a friend. All good options. <laughs> really good options. All right. All right. That's it. Let's move on to audio. Yeah. Let's move on to a little bit of gaming news. I promise these won't actually take long if you hate gaming news. <laughs> but a, a couple of cool things here. So first up, Project X Cloud. We've we've talked about Project X, X Cloud a few times in the past. It is Microsoft's uh, streaming game service. So you, the idea is that once this is public, you would pay some amount of money per month. We don't know how much yet. And you would have access to play video games over a streaming service. You don't have to download them, none of that. It's sort of like Netflix for video games. And they've already got over 50 games in the service that's still in beta. It's just beta right now. Uh, but they've added a, a like a dozen more and it includes some pretty big games. Halo the Master Chief Collection, Destiny 2, Civilization 6, The Wolf Among Us, the Surge, like uh, Wasteland 2. There's a lot of good games here. There's there's at least like 10 more in there. There's some more Telltale stuff. Like there's a lot of good stuff in here. And right now, if you get accepted into the beta, all of this is completely free. All you need is an Android device and an Xbox controller. Uh, one of the not super old ones. It's got to be an Xbox controller with Bluetooth support, which is probably all you've got left at this point because they started making the Bluetooth ones in like 2014, I think, maybe 2015. So you've probably got one of those laying around. So uh, some cool new titles added there. Uh, I would have to imagine that we're getting close to uh, an actual announcement of when this service is going to go fully live, which uh, you know regions it'll be available in, how much it'll cost us, uh, and, and and all of those details. But we don't know yet. So sign up for the beta. Hopefully you get in and enjoy playing a bunch of really great games for free, for completely free right now, as long as the beta is available. Yeah, yeah, this isn't going to be free once it launches. <laughs> there's, there's no way that'll happen. All right, another... Uh, gaming story this time hardware we don't always talk a lot about gaming hardware because there's boatloads of stuff out there and you know i'll talk about some xbox controllers and stuff but i'm much more of a console gamer than a pc gamer so i i will kind of couch the that with 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 that statement um but some something did catch my eye this week steel series has has launched a new mouse and a couple of new keyboards. And SteelSeries is, they make good stuff. They make really good peripherals. A lot of their stuff is higher end uh, equipment. You know, you're looking at $100, $200 or more for, you know, really nice keyboards and headsets and things like that. But they've got some new devices that are available now that are lower cost, a lot lower cost than you might expect and still look like they have pretty high-end features. So first is the mouse, and, and I'll be honest, I, I don't have a gaming mouse. Uh, I don't play like competitive first-person shooters or MOBAs or anything like that where a really high-precision mouse makes a difference. So I, 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 I don't know, and, and I, would, I probably wouldn't buy this mouse. But mm. if you are looking for a good gaming mouse, the, it's called the Rival 3, it's super light. It's only 77 grams. It's got all of the crazy bright RGB lighting so that you can do all the fancy, cool lighting stuff in it. The sensor is 8,500 CPI, which is by no means the highest that I've seen on some of these gaming mouses. Mice? Mice would be a better word than mouses. Uh, and they call it true one-to-one -one tracking. So uh, when your mouse moves and exactly how it moves and when and where and all that, it's exactly, you know, what you see on the screen. It, it's a fairly high-end sensor. This mouse is $30. That is crazy cheap for a nice wired gaming mouse. 
Is it going to be the greatest thing available? No, but the greatest thing available is probably like a $150 mouse. So for 30 bucks, it's worth taking a chance on, I think. Yeah, now, that's pretty good. Hey, uh, a trivia question for Josh. Oh, boy. Back in the day, what did Microsoft call multiple mouse? Uh, I I don't know. I, I can't even think of that being a feature. <laughs> <laughs> so they actually, I, I remember this distinctly because I used to write a lot about Microsoft software for technical writing. And they had guidance that if you had to refer to more than one mouse, then you talked about mouse devices. Oh, smart. Kind of. And and devices what was plural. Right. Of course, that adds this like jargon in <laughs> to the nomenclature that most normal people would never use. Right, but it's not so weird that people won't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, it probably could have been worse. Especially, especially from especially Microsoft. From Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So they do have a couple of keyboards too that I want to talk about because keyboards can get super expensive. Uh, they, these are called the Apex 3 and the Apex 5. Uh, they're basically a step down from the Apex 7 and the Apex Pro, which are much more expensive keyboards. But these two both look a lot like those higher end devices and have some of the same equipment or at least some of the same design. So the Apex 3 is the lower end one. It, I, I'm guessing, doesn't use like mechanical switches, which is what a lot of the gamers really want is mechanical switches because they're calling them whisper quiet. And mechanical switches are never whisper quiet. They're, they are water resistant though. So that can be a good thing, especially if you've got kids in your house that like to use your computer. So uh, it's also got RGB lighting, as you might expect from a gaming keyboard uh, that does, you know, they've got special software that'll integrate with games. So like when you're getting attacked, your keyboard can light up red or something like that. I don't know. Uh, it, it'll also uh, integrate with Discord so that when various things are happening while you're chatting with your friends, your keyboard can do different things. It also has a nice wrist rest. This is something that drives me nuts about a lot of gaming keyboards. I want a wrist rest or my wrist hurt. And both of these keyboards include a really nice wrist rest and it's detachable. So if you don't want it, you can disconnect it and it's just connects by magnets. Magnets, the greatest technology ever invented. So that's, that's the Apex 3. It is $50. That's nothing for a nice gaming keyboard. Uh, the next step up is the Apex 5. This has a combination of mechanical switches and membrane switches. I was reading through it a little bit. I couldn't find out which ones were which. I'm guessing like W, A, S, and D are mechanical switches. Probably most of the rest of them are membrane. Uh, so those are going to be quieter, but not give you the same tactical tactile feedback and all that the mechanical switches would give you. Uh, it has an OLED display on it for various settings and things like that, uh, and all of the same RGB lighting and wrist rest and all of the other stuff that the Apex 3 has. And this keyboard is 100 bucks, So it's definitely a step up, but it's still not crazy expensive. And again, all of this is from Steel Series that makes really good stuff. So uh, I, I think this is some pretty impressive stuff. Uh, when I saw this keyboard, the, especially the Apex 3, I thought, I kind of want this keyboard. So I showed it to Jen. I'm like, uh, what, what would you think if, if this was the keyboard uh, at our desk? And she laughed and said, I don't want that. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> but it looks pretty cool if you're into light up keyboards. Right. Maybe a little bit too geeky for your average PC user. Yeah, especially when your computer's in the dining room and everybody that comes over sees it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe. <laughs> you know, it, it. it's funny when we were at CES, and I'm sorry to do this to you, but I'm going to 
I'm going to tell a, a story of another thing that you missed oh, at man. CES. And you probably remember seeing pictures of this. Chris and I went into the Razor store in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. It's one of three stores in the entire world that Razor has. And one of them is on the little shopping alleyway next to the link. We must have spent 10 or 15 minutes in there doing nothing but trying and kind of comparing or reminiscing about keyboard styles. <laughs> like, oh, this is just like the old Selectric or, oh, this is just like the IBM PC keyboard with the clicks or right. or. There was one that he insisted was like the IBM chiclet keyboard, but I, I'm pretty convinced that Chris doesn't remember the IBM chiclet keyboard properly. <laughs> but it was it was amazing to me because it never occurred to me that for gaming purposes specifically, the feel of the keyboard could make such a difference to the user. Yep. Gamers love these mechanical keyboards. Love them. Yeah, yeah. Cool. But they're also really big in the developer community. That's that's my day job is writing code. And programmers love these things too. But fortunately, there's no one in my office that sits near me that has one of those because well, I wouldn't right. want to listen to people it, typing exactly, on Exactly, exactly. And I'm, you know, you've, you've been around me when we're both writing. I'm a hard typist. <laughs> right. So yeah. I don't need anything that makes extra noise while I'm typing. Right, right. Richard is an angry typer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one more quick gaming story, and that is Games with Gold. It's the end of the month, uh, but as we've talked about in the past, PlayStation doesn't tell us what their next month's games are until... Wednesday, we record on Tuesday, so you're going to have to wait a week to, to find out what the free PS Plus games will be for February. But we do know what the games with gold will be. So uh, you've still got 15 days left to get Batman the Telltale series on Xbox One. That's part of the January lineup. In February, uh, all month long on Xbox One, TT Isle of Man. This is a motorcycle racing game. Uh, February 16th through March 15th, Call of Cthulhu. Uh, first half of February, Fable Heroes. That's an Xbox 360 game available through backwards compatibility. And really going back, uh, the second half of February, the 16th through the 29th, don't forget it's a leap year, Star Wars Battlefront, an original Xbox game. I didn't even remember that that was an original Xbox game. I thought it was a 360 game, but it's not. It was an original Xbox game, and really? it's backward compatible. Yep. I didn't realize it was that old. Yeah, I... Yeah. I really don't know why you would want this at this point. Like, there have been... Uh, th th there's a good Star Wars Battlefront game on Xbox One that you can probably buy for, like, 10 bucks. You should probably get that instead, but this is free. Because <laughs> I don't. Need, I wonder if the multiplayer even works anymore. I have to imagine it doesn't, but I don't know. Maybe it does. I guess we can find out in late February. All right, so that's it for our gaming news. That's it for all of our news. So uh, we're going to get on to what's going on in our entertainment centers. And since it's been two weeks since the last episode the list is a little bit longer than usual so yeah, richard, the list is longer than usual for both of us actually yeah yeah it really is so richard what do you got going on all right i don't have any hardware updates to report which is probably good that means i'm not spending money that i shouldn't well i probably am spending money i shouldn't be spending but not on av hardware anyway lots of stuff that i've been viewing superstore the good place modern family let's stop for a minute at the good place. You also listed that you watched the good place. Yep. I don't know if you saw my tweet about this or not, but I feel like finally there was an episode of the good place that may have just redeemed the rest of the whole otherwise uninspired season. 
Yeah, yeah, I, I would say that's fair. Uh, I, I'm completely caught up. The series finale is this week. Yep. It's it's an interesting place to be because the most recent episode seemed like they rushed four episodes worth of stuff into one episode. It's funny that you say that because I, I, when I saw that, I felt like, man, we could have had an entire season of this. <laughs> right. And it would have been great. It was so funny. It was so funny. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Crazy. All right. So also the Connors started up again. So I'm watching that. This is us in New Amsterdam. I'm up to date on both of those again until probably now. Um, the Flash and Arrow, I am still, I'm really close to finishing last season on both of those. We are a week behind on Doctor Who, but we did watch uh, an episode of Doctor Who. I forgot to mention, and I, I can't believe this because this is so me, this series is so me. I forgot to mention that on Disney Plus, I was watching a series, an original series called The Imagineering Story by Disney about Imagineers and what they do and what they bring to Disney. Have you seen this, Josh? No, no, but I'm not the Disney fan that you are. Oh my God. If you're, if you're a Disney fan, this is wonderful. This is behind the scenes discovery and storytelling about how they created Walt Disney or Disneyland, how they created Walt Disney World, what went into transforming Epcot from the vision that Walt originally had to what it became, how they expanded that then around the world. And they bring it all the way up to and including Galaxy's Edge, which is really one of their newest attractions at the Disney parks. It's a six park series. It's a six part series. It was wonderful. Cool. Yeah, that sounds right up your alley. So I absolutely loved that. I highly recommend it to anyone interested. I also watched uh, something called decorating Disney holiday magic, because if you've ever been to Disney around the holidays, man, do they go all out to decorate for Christmas? And I thought this would be fascinating. It was more, I don't know, PR than fascinating. So I was mm -hmm. not as excited about that, but you know, let's see. Also, um, we started Season four of Grace and Frankie, part two. I, I don't understand how Netflix counts, but part two, which really seems like season three of The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina started. So we're a couple episodes into that. It's really good. I didn't know what to expect. It's really good. Also watched a couple of the Star Trek short takes. Those are the things that have kind of accompanied the uh, the Discovery series as that has been coming out. And um, I watched the first episode of Picard. How was it? Wow. This is going to be so good. <laughs> is that another one of those CBS All Access shows? It is. Let's just, I'm going to say... I watched it with a friend. <laughs> okay. It's so good. It is so good. And uh, are they are they doing the we're going to release it weekly sort of thing that or yes. do, okay. So if you don't want to pay for multiple months of CBS All Access wait. Yeah. It's so good. I, they're doing everything right. I, I am nice. so impressed with it. Because that was so not the case with, with the new Star Trek series, right? Well, the the new Star Trek series got off to a rocky start. It redeemed itself. Okay. Star Trek Discovery ended up being a very, 
very good series. And I'm looking forward to season three. But yeah, they, just from the start, you can they really they paid attention to honoring the the existing storylines. They even somehow brilliantly managed to blend the traditional what is known as the canon Star Trek timeline with what is known as the Kelvin Star Trek timeline, which is what takes place in the movies. So it just, mm, damn, they did a good job. Okay. Also, I've been watching some of the impeachment trial and that may surprise people because I've been a political junkie watching all of this stuff, but oh my God, I'm so bored. I am so tired of hearing the same thing over and over <laughs> and over again. And that was just the Democrat starting out. So, like, it was just, yeah, yeah, I couldn't take it. I couldn't take it anymore. So I'm back to watching the news instead of watching the actual <laughs> trials because way too boring. Yeah, I, I have a really hard time staying interested in it when I, I mean it's like why would i want to go watch a movie when i already know how it's going to end like that that's how i feel about it hmm. yeah yep fair point yeah all right we also watched the movie the adams family um not one that we knew how it was going to end but we should have known it wasn't going to be good and it wasn't <laughs> yikes yeah uh, and then I just wanted to mention a couple of artists, a couple of musical artists that I have recently become more aware of and I've been listening to a lot. Uh, they are in no particular order, Active Child, Nikki and the Dove, and Emmett, Fan, Emmett Fenn. Um, Active Child and Emmett Fenn in particular are kind of vocal artists that are very, very moody, very kind of ethereal and I I just love the sound. It's really good for working music and Nikki and the dove. I don't even know where I heard of them. Probably one of my, you know, curated for you playlists on some service and they have a lot of fun, entertaining music. So cool. I don't know if you've heard of any of those. Nope. None of artists, them. Josh, none of them. I'm going to talk about a, a, an artist that you've probably never heard of in a little bit. So, Yeah, that's very likely. Well, let's, that's a good transition. Other <laughs> than The Good Place, what have you been doing in your entertainment center? Well, I haven't, uh, like you, I've not done any hardware stuff. I also, uh, well, unlike you, haven't watched any other TV. Uh, well, I mean, I might have watched hockey, except that the NHL takes most of the week off around the All-Star game. Uh, which means the only hockey you can watch is the really terrible all-star game, which I didn't do because it's terrible. So <laughs> I haven't watched any hockey in the last week, unfortunately. Uh, and there's no football on either. So I, I mean, can I ask a question? <laughs> Why is it terrible? Like, Be I mean, the, like people, you know, if you look at the Olympics games, the U S team is more or less an all-star team, right? So why aren't all-star games good then? Because all-star games, unlike the Olympics, don't matter. So uh... no one plays very hard. And without the passion, it ain't the same game. Okay, that's a good point. Yeah, like no one plays defense. The goalies just get ripped to shreds. It's, it's not fun. <laughs> like you just, you finish the day feeling bad for the goaltenders. It's, it's not hockey. Sorry. Like I... I wish they would just stop doing it. Like I have to imagine that the NHL loses money by doing this because I, I would rather be watching regular hockey. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, we've got Super Bowl this week, so at least there will be a football game to watch. Uh, I, although I'm more interested in the commercials. So <laughs> I, As is most of America. Right, right. I, I decided today that during the Super Bowl, I'm going to take my laptop. Uh, we're, we're not having a party or anything, but we'll watch. And during the football parts, I'm going to work on my taxes. And then when it's commercials, I'll pay attention <laughs> to the commercials. Because <laughs> I don't care about either of these teams. So I really don't care about the football. So, 
as does most of America. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> so I'm, I'm at least going to make it productive, hopefully. All right, so gaming. I, I mentioned a couple weeks ago that I did get Call of Duty Modern Warfare for Christmas. Finally, in the last couple of weeks, I was able to get some time to play it. I've cool. only been playing the single-player campaign, and it's good. Like the last, uh, really the last couple of uh, single player campaigns that were in Call of Duty games, I didn't really care for. Uh, there was one that was slightly into the future and it was just a story that didn't even make sense. Uh, it was way too complicated. Uh, the game before that was uh, also kind of in the future-ish and, and had basically a really cheesy action plot story that didn't matter. Uh, and then there was also the World War II one, which I just didn't care for the game at all. So this is modern warfare. It is basically, you know, terrorist attack in London and you're spending a bunch of time in the Middle East in a made up country called Urzikstan or something like that. You can guess what country it's supposed to be. Um, it's exactly the type of storyline that I like in movies and books and games, and I'm really enjoying it. The story actually makes sense, and Call of Duty gameplay is fantastic, so that's really good. Uh, Joe and I have played a little bit more Gears 5. I think we're finally on the final act, so maybe by this time next week I will be able to say that I've finished Gears 5, but not yet. Uh, in terms of books, I've been I've been listening to a lot of audiobooks lately, uh, which means that I've been skipping a lot of podcasts because mm. I don't know I don't know what it is. People, you got to do a better job making your podcast because they're not interested in me as much as they used to. <laughs> uh, I finished. Uh, this is more of a management ebook, but it it was really good and and short. The five dysfunctions of a team. If you're on a team, if you run a team. It's this is worth a read. I don't know how many pages it is, but as an audiobook, it was under four hours. That's really short. Uh, I finished the third book in Tom Clancy's Op Center series. I was thinking for some reason there were only three books in this series. No, there's like 15. So I've got a long way to go on wow. that one. Yeah. And they're shorter ish. They're like eight to 12 hours as audiobooks, which is a really nice size for me. But I also like put Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six on hold and that became available for me. So I started that today. That book is 36 hours long. That's Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. That <laughs> that might be longer than the Dark Tower series was. Yeah. I think that was like for some reason I had it in my head that was like twenty six or something. It's it's super long. I I I had to start it a couple of days after I got the got it off of hold. I don't know if I can finish this book in the days that I have remaining. <laughs> it's so long. But Yeah, well that's a really interesting point, right? Like how much time do you have to actually consume all of that time? Is that even feasible? Yeah, because I think I only have like 16 or 17 days left and uh, I don't listen that much. So I don't know. We'll see. I, I hope so because all of these Tom Clancy books that I've read have been good. Wow. Uh, I did want to talk a little bit about software stuff, uh, very much related to the things that we've been talking about earlier in the show and, and frequently on the show. I I mentioned uh, a couple episodes ago as part of my cable cleanup behind the TV and stuff, I got everything hooked up again with my HD home run tuner. And I don't even remember what it was that I wanted to watch the other day, but I was just doing some stuff around the house and was like, I want to, oh, I think it was a hockey game the previous Sunday. The, the Penguins were on NBC. So I was able to watch it uh, over the air. And I was like, I just want to watch this on my phone while I'm getting some stuff done. And I thought, I'm going to use the HD Home Run app instead of the TiVo app because you fire up the HD Home Run app and it's just, bam, live TV. With the TiVo app, you got to go to the guide, find what you want to watch, set it to record and watch. Like, it's a lot of work just to watch a live TV show. 
<laughs> the HD Home Run app, way simpler. It's like having a TV in your pocket. So, But it's ugly. Uh, it is kind of ugly, but most of the time you don't see that interface, right? You just <laughs> see the TV show that you're watching. True. So uh, I, I'm glad to have that up and working again. And then my music-related thing is Jen and I went to a concert last weekend. And I know this doesn't have anything at all to do with with home media consumption, but man, going to concerts is nice. Uh, we saw a band called Mipso. They're more Americana, folk, bluegrassy kind of music. Really, really good band. Um, saw them at this awesome venue called The Ark in Ann Arbor, Michigan. If you're ever in that area uh, and want to see that style of music, go to The Ark. It is a fantastic place to watch a show. Uh, we ended up two rows back from the stage. It was phenomenal. Great music, great place to see a show. Loved it. And so there's my my musical recommendation for you. Mipso, M-I-P-S-O. That's cool. You're right. I've never heard of them. I did see her pictures. And from all of the strings that I saw <laughs> on the instruments, I assumed it was something along those lines. Yeah. Yes, there. They have a guitar, a mandolin, a fiddle, and an upright bass. <laughs> so it's, oh, they're so good. They're really, really good. Definitely cool. check them out if you're into that kind of music. Awesome. Yeah. So that's it for what's going on in my entertainment center. That's pretty much it for the show. If you want to get a hold of us, like to send us some email so that we can read it at the beginning of the next episode, uh, the email address is entertainment20 at the digital media zone.com. We're also on Twitter at Richard Gunther, at Josh Pollard, at DigiMediaZone. We're on Instagram, Facebook, all those stuff. It's all in the show notes over at the digitalmediazone.com. Richard, you just released a Home On episode that is freaking me out when I go to the, the DMZ website. Yeah, it's because it has your picture on it and you're <laughs> looking at you on the website. It's a little weird. If you ever wanted to see a giant picture of my face, just go to the digital media zone. <laughs> um, so now that no one's going to go to the DMZ for the oh, next week. Oh, not true. <laughs> well, yeah, you were kind enough to join me to kind of do a CES wrap up. And I finally got over my CES hangover and managed to get that episode produced and out. And, you know, I... I know that CES was a couple weeks ago, but we had a whole lot of stuff that we went through and a lot of cool products that I, I hope people are still interested in. I don't see why you wouldn't be, even though it's like two weeks. The beauty of CES is that it's predicting futures anyway, right? right. So hopefully people will enjoy that and then i'm working on a couple new episodes coming up that i'm very excited about nothing that i can specifically talk about in terms of names though but hopefully stuff that will get people excited cool well, and we always like to remind everybody that we do record this show live, usually Tuesday nights at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Live means you get the audio, you get the video, you get a chat room where you can you know, participate in the show. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we always tweet about when the show is going to be so that you can come and join us. We're also going to try and get these up on YouTube. We'll see how that goes this week because uh, that's going to do it for episode 508. He's Richard Gunther, and I'm Josh Pollard. Thanks for listening to Entertainment 2.0. Adios. Goodbye. <laughs>